I'm on the road, guys. Started off a couple of hours late while I waited for the weather to pass. Welcome to the Radar Challenge. You are listening to the emergency broadcast systems. This station broadcasts emergency news and official information on the air for a signed narrative. Supporting amateur radio's mandate for emergency communications capabilities, radar is a concept for operating your amateur radio station anywhere, anytime, in any environmental conditions. With that said, radar operators are encouraged to be completely self-reliant. They carry things like food, water, their station equipment, a shelter, protective clothing, and anything else that's required for rapid deployment or extended field communications. For this radar challenge, I was man portable and on foot, but I augmented my portability with a hiking trailer. So I really didn't mind the 1.8 kilometer hike from my start point to my first operating location. I ordered myself the Wheelie Traveler from Radical Design. It's a two-wheeled hiking trailer with a 70 liter internal payload. Thanks to this trailer, I was actually able to carry the entire solar-powered field station without putting any of the load on my shoulders. I augmented the hiking trailer with the RIBS front pack. This gave me a chance to carry my tablet, GPS, bug spray, and anything else I needed to grab in real time. I made a blog post about my entire gear loadout with the trailer and the RIBS front pack on oh8stn.org. You'll find the link in the description. After a 1.8 kilometer hike, I arrived at my first location, which is Kilo Papa 25, Romeo Charlie 31 Echo Bravo. Arriving on location, I realized the hiking trailer gives me a couple of different benefits. Firstly, it allows me to maximize my communications capabilities. And secondly, it helps reduce operator fatigue. When everything's working the way it should, the planets are all in the right order and aligned in the right way, we try to work radar to radar contacts. So when I heard Andy from the UK, of course I tried to work him. These contacts don't always work out the way we want them to, but we'll definitely try Andy on another excursion. For this first station configuration, I used the Pactina Mini InFed cut for 20 meters. I also had the Super Antenna MP1 as my backup antenna. I used the DIY 10 amp hour LifePo 4 that you've seen on the channel with the Guinness on charge controller and the Powerfilm 120 watt folding panel. Supporting the antenna was a Sota Beam's 10 meter telescopic mast. The station actually packs up pretty easily. The radio, the tuner if I'm using one, the Raspberry Pi and audio interface, and everything else I need for the station pack nicely inside this fishing tackle bag. It's also easy to pack up and store the solar panels on the trailer. Here I'm packing up the 120 watt panel, folding it back up into its stowed position, and I place it into the front compartment of the trailer. I can also fit the 20 watt backup panel as well as the 10 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery pack that powers my station. If I needed to charge that battery pack while I was on the move, I would use the 20 watt panel on the back of the trailer. With my five contacts in hand, I was able to move on to the next location. That was Kilo Papa 25 Romeo Charlie 51 Romeo Hotel. For the second location, I used a slightly different station configuration. Since I got a late start, the sun was already quite low in the sky by the time I reached the second location. For this reason, I placed the solar panel horizontally between two birch trees to maximize its energy input. I also minimized my setup time for the antenna by using the trees for an inverted V configuration rather than setting up with a telescopic mast. 
The solar panel in this configuration also provided some much needed shade for my electronics which were getting hot under the sun. At the second location I decided to focus on digital communications. So I worked some PSK-63, some PSK-31, and of course FT-8. I was also lucky enough to get Andy in the waterfall again, but because of some QRM I wasn't able to finalize the queue, so next time Andy. Many of you have given me feedback asking for real-time battery statistics when I'm out in the field, so let's take a look at those. I arrived at the first operating location with 14 volts on the pack. When packing up to leave the first operating location, I had 13.5 volts left on the pack. Tearing down the station at the second operating location, I still had 13.3 volts left on the pack. Total operating time was about 4 hours with zero energy conservation. On the topic of portable power for field communications, I've put an incredible amount of time into testing the power foam panels, the Guinnesson charge controllers, and the DIY lithium iron phosphate battery packs we've built on the channel. Now one of the goals of the radar challenge was understanding whether or not this small lithium iron phosphate battery pack plus a large power film solar panel would be able to keep up with the current consumption of our field station. Now consider this, we finished the day with a battery which was almost full. If we would have utilized a more efficient mode or lower power, it's very possible our battery usage would have been plus minus zero for the day. Now let's talk about ham radio biathlons and man portable moving stations. Operators are free to approach the challenge like a game or we can approach it more like a training op. Station mobility and portability are amongst the most important aspects of the challenge. So for this radar challenge, I was testing my mobility or my ability to move. I was testing my portability or how compact my station actually was. I was testing my station's effectiveness. And of course, I was testing my station's efficiency in terms of battery power. The radar challenge provides us with some structure for getting out in the field and operating portable. This goes well beyond your basic ARRL field day because your station actually has to be practical and efficient. And that's what makes the radar challenge different. I mean, we're not going to take our home stations, put everything in a couple of large pelican cases, throw them in the back of a truck and then set them up out in the field. We simply won't learn very much by doing it that way. Since radar operators are required to move after every five contacts, the ability to set up our stations, tear down our stations, and then set them up in a new location becomes critical. So it doesn't take very long for a radar operator to understand what's working for them and what's not. And we can use that experience in emergency field communications, communications for preparedness, or simply to build a more efficient portable station. Let's talk about my station configuration for the challenge. I purposely operated the Yezu FT891 at full power for the entire four hours of the challenge. The power supply for the station was the 10 amp hour lithium iron phosphate pack we've built on the channel, and it was augmented by the power film 120 watt panel. At this time of year, I was able to get away with the smaller, lighter battery pack because I augmented it with the larger solar panel. The trailer weighs 6.3 kilos or around 13 pounds. Only a fraction of the payload weight is transferred to my harness and shoulders. That's actually the benefit of this type of trailer. With that said, I carried these things whether I needed to or not. That's the Nortent TB6, that's the Yezu FT891, the Pactena NFED Halfwave, the Super Antenna MP1, the Raspberry Pi, my ZLP Mini Pro SE audio interface, the 10 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery pack, my Powerfilm 120 and 20 watt panels, the Guinness on charge controller, my jet boil, Sawyer Mini water filter, 2 liters of water, and my first aid kit. 
The Radar Challenge and Ham Radio Biathlons in general are excellent ways of improving our amateur radio field communications skill sets. But at some point, we need to get out into the field to validate our skills. That's what the X Days Off Grid series is all about. Just as it's been with the Radar Challenge for the last few years, I'm going to hike out to a predetermined location, set up a base camp, and operate for as long as I can. The only difference is I'm going to do that on a larger scale. So I'm going to hike out with my trailer and the entire solar powered field station. I'll then set up my base camp and radio communications. While I'm there, I'm going to engage with my followers and subscribers and the rest of the ham radio community using modes like FT8 call, HFAPRS and radio email. To operate my station, I'm going to collect and store as much energy as I can. And finally, when I'm done, I'm going to hike back to my pickup point, come home and document the entire experience on my blog and the YouTube channel. If you'd like more information about Radar or the Radar Challenge, please visit www.radarops.co.za. There's also a Google Plus community for Radar. If you'd like to follow my excursions or get more information about field communications or portable off-grid power, you can always visit www.oh8stn.org. And don't forget the Portable Digital and QRP group on Facebook. This is an excellent place to get help getting started with digital field communications and portable power. Well, I hope this video wasn't too abstract. Anyway, let me know what you think about my station or ask any questions you might have in the comments. So, that brings us to the end of the video. Look guys, if you like what I'm doing, if you like the content I'm creating, let me know by leaving me a comment and a thumbs up. And if you think I deserve it, please share this video someplace or with someone who might enjoy it. Rock and roll guys. Thanks for watching. Ciao.